A critical hit in Dungeons & Dragons is one of the best feelings in the world. You roll to attack, and there it is, smiling back at you, a 20. <sighs> There's a sense of excitement as the tide of battle turns to your favor. There's a sense of camaraderie as your friends around the table cheer you on. And then there's a sense of crushing disappointment because you rolled two for your damage roll. <sighs> hey everybody, Grav here. And on this episode of Tactical Studies, I want to take a look at the history of the critical hit as well as a few ways to modify it for fifth edition. Let's get critical. In the first edition of D&D, the critical hit was actually non-existent. If you rolled a 20, it was just like rolling any other number on the die. It, it didn't actually do anything special. And it turns out that the idea of a critical hit didn't really mesh well with Gary Gygax and the folks over at TSR. Gary himself even said that the critical hit or double damage on a two-hit die roll of 20 is particularly offensive to the precepts of D&D. The point must be made that the whole game system is perverted and the game possibly ruined by the inclusion of instant death rules, be they aimed at monsters or characters. In the former case, they imbalance the play and move the challenge which has been carefully placed in the D&D. In the latter, instant death no longer allows participants to use judgment when playing. Gary believed that there should be a balance, and that balance is uh, usually broken when critical hits enter the fray. However, with so many fans house ruling and creating their own critical hit tables, TSR eventually relented and added their own critical hit rules. In Advanced D&D 2nd Edition, the critical hit rules were optional and had two different variations. The first was that on a natural 20, you would roll double damage and add any relevant modifiers after. The second method was that every time you rolled a natural 20, you would get an extra attack which means that you could theoretically chain critical hits forever. The critical hit system actually got a third variation in a supplement called Player's Option, Combat and Tactics. This version by far was the largest and most robust of the three, with several pages containing multiple tables. And this is how it works. First, you roll a hit. If you roll an 18 or higher, then it might be a critical hit, but only if you beat the opponent's AC by a margin of 5 or more. If you do, the target makes a saving throw against death. If they pass, it's a normal hit. If they fail, it's a critical hit. Roll double damage and add all other static bonuses. And then the target is given a specific injury, which is based on what type of weapon they were hit with and what type of creature they are. The weapon type and creature type each have their own corresponding chart. So there is a chart for slashing versus humanoids, slashing versus animals, slashing versus monsters. There's also a chart for bludgeoning versus humanoids, bludgeoning versus animals, bludgeoning versus monsters. And there's a chart for piercing versus humanoids, piercing versus animals, and piercing versus monsters. Choose the correct corresponding table and then roll a d10 to see where you hit them. You can hit them in seven different locations, including the right leg, the left leg, the abdomen, the torso, the right arm, the left arm, and the head. Once you've figured all that out, you'll roll to figure out the severity of the hit. You could knock down the opponent, you could break their foot, you could damage their armor, you can break Moving on! In the third edition of D&D, critical hits were revised with rules such as critical threat ranges and crit confirmation rules. You see, each weapon type has its own threat range, which means a critical hit can occur on multiple numbers, not just a 20. The threat range also determines how much that damage will be multiplied by when a critical hit happens, anywhere from 2 times to 4 times damage. Now a natural 20 is still the only way to get an automatic hit, but if your roll is within that critical threat range, it means it has a chance of being a critical hit. I say chance because here comes the weird part. To confirm your attack as a critical hit, you need to make a second identical attack, known as a confirmation roll, and beat the target's AC. If that attack misses, it's just a normal hit. But if that roll results in a hit, that means your original attack is a critical hit. Then you roll for double, triple, or quadruple damage, depending on the critical multiplier of your weapon. Now I know what you're thinking. Crit confirmation sounds pretty darn awful. You roll and you get a 20. Yay, we did it, 20! And then your DM says, roll for crit confirmation, and you roll a 5. Uh, no. Yeah, it's kind of a letdown. But there's a really good reason why it exists. Say that you're fighting a huge water elemental, and this crit confirmation feature doesn't exist. Well, with an AC of 23 and your attack bonus of plus 2, that means you can only hit this elemental on a 20. This guy is pretty tough. But that also means that every time you do hit it, you get a critical hit. Which doesn't really make sense. 
Using crit confirmation, you're much less likely to get a critical hit on a big baddie, but you'll still hit the same number of times. So yes, with crit confirmation, you will have less crits in your game, but the ones that do happen will be fair and balanced. 4th edition made things a bit simpler, returning the critical hit to one roll. If you get a natural 20, you automatically hit. If the 20 plus your relevant modifiers was not enough to beat the target's AC, then it's just a normal hit. If it did meet or beat the target's defense, then it's a critical hit. The damage for a critical hit is the maximum value of a regular hit. So if you roll 1d8 plus 3 normally for damage, a crit with that attack would be 11 damage. If any class features or abilities that affect your attack and add damage, that damage is maximized as well. And if your weapons or items increase damage in any way, those rolls are made on top of the maximized damage. And now we're caught up to the current edition of D&D, 5th edition. The way a critical hit works in 5th edition is actually pretty simple. You roll to attack. If you get a natural 20, you automatically hit, regardless of the target's AC. You roll double your damage die, and all other modifiers and bonuses are added in after. But is it too simple? Is it just downright boring? Like most things in the game, it comes down to the dice. Like in my earlier example, if you actually rolled snake eyes for damage, everybody's going to be pretty sad. I asked some of you Dungeon Masters on Twitter about your thoughts on the current critical hit rules in 5th edition. Do you use them as written, or do you modify them? The vast majority of you said that you use them as written, doubling the damage dice and adding bonuses. And while that's all good and well, I myself enjoy modifying my crits to give them that little extra edge. I want them to mean something, mechanically and narratively. For the mechanics side, I modify my crits to make sure that they do a reasonable amount of damage every time. Instead of doubling and rolling the damage die, I just max out the first set of dice and then roll my second set, adding any damage modifying bonuses on afterwards. This is a method that I've seen many people use and it's been mentioned quite a bit on the internet. It's sort of a combination of the critical hit rules from 4th and 5th edition. On the narrative side of critical hits, one way to add some flair to your 20s is to use some of the numerous critical hit tables you can find on the internet. I'll put a link to some of my favorites in the video description below. There's also a set of 5th edition critical hit cards made by Nord Games that you can purchase from their website for about $15. Just draw a card whenever you roll a 20 and read the effect. Each card has four different outcomes depending on the damage type. Personally, I like to juice up my critical hits on the fly during combat. I'll work together with the players to figure out an outcome that works best with the story and the battle at hand. That way you're working these epic moments into your game and making them feel a little bit more natural. Well that's it guys, that's the history of critical hits and a few ways to modify yours in your game. If you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribing as well. If you're interested in more saving throw stuff check out our Patreon, we've got some great stuff there. Once again I'm Gaurav and I'm at DoubleGXG on Twitter. See you next time guys! Thank you.